Hello everybody, this is going to be a fun little video. Um, I did one like this a while ago, but it was terrible. Anyways, what I have here are a bunch of fossils. Now, one of the things I enjoy doing, usually in the summertime, is fossil hunting, because there's a lot of it... Let's just say like, there's a lot of different types of fossils in the area in which I live, which is Alberta, south, south southern Alberta. Anyways, so here I have a wide selection of different types, uh, mostly land and sea. For example, I have ammonites, which you can see they have kind of this blue incandescent gasoline sheen. Now that blue and gold sheen, at least the blue one, is only found in this area of Alberta and to our knowledge nowhere else in the world, which is really weird, but um, <laughs> it's actually quite valuable too. Like, like this, this piece might have um, gem quality layers there. I could probably sell this for a bit, but I'm not going to. Uh, I have another one here. This one has a white ammonite on the front, but on the back it has more of a red gold sheen. Again, uh, probably worth money, but I'm not going to sell it. This two also. Actually, this one has different types. This one has on this side and a shiny blue. Less to a degree on this side. More gold, actually. Uh, so we have ammonites. I also have clams. Now I have a whole bunch of these, but this piece I like the best. This is a bunch of just clams stacked up on each other, and there's a bit of a sheen to this. This one's actually coated in um, a transparent coating, because I found it, and did, I did do a lot of my older, like a lot of fossils from years ago. I just gave them a quick coating to protect, to protect, like, to protect them from weathering, because they do degrade. And then over here, I have dinosaur bones. This one, actually, I don't know if you can actually see it. Um, maybe. But... It'll actually focus. I don't know if it will. Uh, yeah, you can see them. Those are teeth marks on the bone. Those little ridges? Yeah. Those are teeth marks from something. So obviously, when this creature died, it was being gnawed on. And that's just really damn cool. Actually, I have these bones are from different dinosaurs. Um, I have a claw somewhere, too. Oh, actually, right here. That I found. Now, this is actually a really sad sob story for me. So you can see the uh, the ridges on the, on, on the tooth. Yeah, look at that. Isn't that cool? Now, this is actually a sob story for me. Because you may notice the tip is broken. Now, when I found this, this was completely intact. It had the tip and everything. Um, but years and years and years ago, when I was moving it, it fell, landed on the tip, and just shattered it. Completely shattered it. Couldn't even fix it. So now I have this half-broken tooth, which is an unending source of grief for me, because, well, it it just it sucks. Uh, is this bone, or is this... No, that, uh, yeah, that is bone. It has the enamel. Anyways... What I have here is my Geiger counter, which I love, to show you guys an interesting thing that fossils generally have. Boop. And that is... The... Oh, shit. And welcome back. Um, now what happened there was my Geiger counter had been left on since last I used it, and the batteries were dead. So um, I had to wait a couple days and go get some batteries, and now it's up and running. But to you guys, it'll just be a quick little skip. Anyways, what was I talking about? Um, fossils, yes, anyways. Um, <laughs> the reason why I have my Geiger counter with me is because fossils have an interesting... Uh, one minute, Let's twist this around. They have an interesting thing a property about them that happens and that when they fossilize, you know like how fossils when they fossilize they uh, are basically just casts of minerals that are around them of the original thing and if there so happen to be high levels of uranium in oh, let's move this back a little bit in the rock, which there generally is the fossils will actually absorb large amounts of these isotopes and you get basically a fossil that's mildly radioactive. We'll start it with some dinosaur bone. Um, 
Here, we'll, we'll do this. So you can see the, uh, the dial. Uh, it, yeah, it isn't like it's, it isn't terribly, yeah, like it isn't much higher than background. Some are more radioactive than others. Let's try ammonite. It's more in mudstone. Usually terrestrial fossils like dinosaur bones are mildly radioactive because of uranium isotopes. Well, there's some there. It usually hovers around 5 millirankins an hour, so. Now, this is my chewed on one. Yeah, that one, that one, that one's a little, little hotter than the other rocks. Like, it, it isn't a whole lot, it isn't a big difference, but generally fossils will have more uranium in them, or thorium, depending on what the, uh, the rocks around them contain. Let's use this. Now, what this is, this is actually a very large lump. I don't know if you can see all the pores and stuff, of dinosaur bone marrow. I don't know, the bone that this came from had deteriorated and fallen apart, but um, I managed to save this, which was a large lump of marrow. It's actually kind of delicate, so I have to be careful when handling it. Yeah, it kind of comes and goes, it depends on where it all is. Try the tooth out of curiosity. Maybe a little bit, but not a whole lot. Like here, for just calibration's sake, I'll move this over here away from the fossils. And this is this is this is normal background. Yeah, you can usually get a spike, but for the most part it stays under five millirankins an hour. Whereas I bring it over here with the fossils and I put a rock over it. This is the ammonite. Actually, let's try this one. Yeah, usually the larger ones contain more, which, well, that just makes sense. Ooh. Don't want dust to be in there. No, we're good. All right. <laughs> Let's do a couple more. Yeah, it's, it's it's a very small increase from background, so it's not like fossils. When you say they're radioactive, isn't it like you know they're gonna like give you cancer or anything? Actually, even just being over here by all the fossils increases the. Uh, the ambient background in this little area by a very small amount. If I had a digital one that could give more accurate readings, it would be a little more apparent, but for this right now, you, you can just tell it's more active when it's over here than when it's way over here. I'm gonna bring it back. And it's just more active, so yeah. Uh, my camera's about to die, but um... Let's turn this off first. Good. And then off that. And there you go. So that's just a fun little video I wanted to show. Um, I usually bring, I usually bring my Geiger, Geiger counter when I take it out to fossil hunting and stuff because it's just fun. Um, <laughs> actually, this counter is pretty cool. Um, I don't know if you can see the sticker here. This is the service sticker from the last time it was serviced in the year. Yeah, 2000. And it was from. Trojan nuclear plant, which no longer exists, actually. So, um, I have all the stickers and stuff still on this from when it used to work at a nuclear power plant. All the serial numbers. It's really cool. I love my counter. But anyways, yes, um, that's all I want to talk about was the wonderful world of fossils and how I love them. And I hope you all enjoyed that. I'll get back to other videos, um, probably right now, actually. So, thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and space.